Hey, Justice, it's totally Friday. Okay, it's not. It's Sunday. But um, anyway, so this is take two on the recording because on Friday I ended up recording this and for some weird, odd reason, the audio wasn't working. So here I am on Sunday evening at 8 o'clock at night recording myself trying to figure out if this is working it is it should be if it doesn't i'm gonna be angry because it's showing the little sound wavies Ugh. anyway so first of all before i forget your word of the week is annoyance originally it was hate but you know that didn't work out so we're going to just ignore that and pretend it didn't happen and go on with from there and besides that also uh I'm going to actually retell the Jeep incident and everything else and explain the move in full and hopefully get this done so that way I don't have to worry about recording it again. Uh, 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 shoot me now. Anyway, so... Ah, anyway, so, um, the Jeep incident. As you know, you ended up calling me... I ended up calling you up asking you for um, the state trooper for Pennsylvania, the number and stuff, and ended up getting like transferred like three different ways to three different people to finally get to where I need to be. Um, I got transferred. It was the first one. I, I had to write down the next number, call the actual person. I called that person, and they were from the wrong city. They were the city beyond us instead of the city that was before us. So I had to call the Dubois. Uh, no, I got transferred to the Dubois police instead of whoever it was. It was something with an S. I don't remember. Anyway, um, I ended up got, getting transferred to them and had to call them up. Anyway, so, as we were driving along, we left at like 8 o'clock, 8.30 in the morning. We had packed the couch in, which is what I'm sitting on. It's a nice, decent couch. We've been using it every single time, every single day so far, so it's a good couch. An old couch, but a good couch. And, um the bed that we got from Josh's parents into the trailer and we had got everything set up and we had to move everything around and make sure that that was all fit and packed tight and so on and so forth. And once we got done with that, we got on the road at eight 30 at around 11 30. We're driving on the road and all of a sudden Josh puts on his blinker to go into the, um, onto the side of the road. And Beta gets a call saying that the Jeep is overheating. Now, I pulled over behind Josh. And Beta got out and told them to basically turn on the heater. So that way they could get as much of the heat away from the engine as quickly as possible. Just make sure that, you know, everything was going to be okay. And I glance up to see smoke coming out of the Jeep on both sides. And I was just uh, immediately like, it good. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good. So I got out of the car. Well, I had to check for traffic. And then I got out of the car. And once we did that, I walked over. And there was oil all over the ground. And it was a big pile of just bleh, And the Jeep had exploded. Exploded. We, we've just been kind of explaining verbatim that it was the Jeep explosion incident. So that is what happened with the Jeep. And um, we found out later that it blew a gasket. And Josh and I are down to one car instead of two now because of that, which is not that big of a deal. The parking outside, it's probably better that we have one car instead of two. Things like that, it's not that big of a deal for the most part. Um, the big problem is, is that currently it kind of puts us in a situation where I have got to find a job that's either within walking distance, which might not be as easy as, it might be easier said than done. And, um, you know, Josh is going to be on campus most of the time during the day. So either I have to do that or I have to drop him off at, at school and then pick him up later on. And without a phone, that's, you know, that could be very easy. So that's that. And then, um, so what ended up happening was we called up Josh's parents. We called up you and a couple of different people to get everything set up, had the state trooper come. And after the state trooper came and everything else was taken care of, we had, um, goodness gracious, we had uh, Josh's parents come up, and they had a three-hour drive. I ended up uh, going ahead of Josh, picked up some food and water for him, went down a ton of hills and everything like that, went through a mini-mart, uh, got to the mini-mart in Pennsville. It was a very small place, um, obviously a camping exit, and uh, we got some food for him, 
or for us, and then some water for him and some food for him. And then we came back, dropped that off, and did a big loop-de-loop, and then went on our way. And I got into uh, Massachusetts at like 9 o'clock at night, and Josh came in at 12 o'clock with his parents' truck and everything. So as soon as that was taken care of, and that's parents' truck, his uh, parents' friend's truck. And as soon as that was taken care of, uh, ended up taking the truck back as soon as we got everything unloaded. And on the truck ride home, we had a very, very interesting ride. We had, um, what are you watching? Markiplier is doing fly in the house. Oh, goodness. You might want to pause that for a moment before and let me watch it, because I kind of want to see what he does. Anyway, um, so that's that. You have a wonderful day. I will watch your video tomorrow and hopefully not have this issue happen again. Yay.